don't expect a top five out of the Panthers. Um, Bucks were top ten defense. They'll probably be right around there again this year. Falcons defense not going to get any better better outside of the top fifteen. And New Orleans had one of the worst defenses in the league last year, and they're not going to be much better on that side of the ball either. So let's get to it. Let's get to So I picked, like I said, my picks were Panthers are going to win it, Saints are going to come in last, and, you know, the Bucks and Falcons, they could switch there in the middle. It could go either way. For the Saints, you know, they got some, some players, I guess. They got a nice center in Max Unger. Um, He's getting a little long in the tooth, though. They brought in Cortland Finnegan to play defensive back because they just don't have anybody playing defensive back for him. Cameron Jordan should have a nice season again. They brought in Matt Shaughnessy in free agency. (laughs) Daryl Tapp came over. Nick Fairley came over. So they should have a better defensive line than they've had last year. They've got the fullback, Coon, uh, from Green Bay, but, you know, he's entering his 10th season. They lost their rookie defensive tackle, who looked like he was going to be good, Sheldon Rankins. He's out for the year. They got James Laronitis, who was let free by L.A. Drew Brees, 16 years, okay? He's getting up there. He's a smaller guy. Nothing against smaller quarterbacks. But now you're looking at it from a standpoint that you're a smaller quarterback who's had to work harder, and you're going into your 16th year. Uh, As far as running backs, they should be able to run the ball. They have Hightower. They have Ingram. They have Spiller. They should be able to formulate a running game. Roman Harper came over. He's at least going to offer some leadership to the secondary, help mentor the Kenny Vaccaro. Who, you know, he's in his fourth year, but he's a little raw still. Kobe Fleener came over from, uh, where was he at? Indianapolis. (laughs) They still got Brandon Cooks, the speedy guy. And uh, Michael Thomas joined him out of Ohio State this year. And they're going to need everything they can get out of Michael Thomas. I mean, really. Oh, the Bucks. Who I got coming in, what? third in the division not because of lack of talent I mean I think they're building a nice squad down there in Tampa Bay but this is just a tough division where for some reason first goes to worst worst goes to first nobody knows who can beat who in the division they brought over Brent Grimes he's going to help Vernon Hargraves who's already making a splash it's going to make Ultron Werner look better or maybe just get taken advantage of Robert Ayers came over Noah Spence, I think, is going to be a nice little pick for him. The rookie out of Eastern Kentucky. Gerald McCoy is a beast. Rookie kicker, hopefully they can get him straight because he was lights out at Florida State. Robert Agoyo, uh, he's having some issues right now, though. Linebacker, Quan Alexander and Levante David, they're pretty solid there. They have the veteran, Daryl Smith. Again, another element of leadership, experience. Mike Glennon, who may or may not stay on the team, is a pretty good backup with starting experience in the league. Doug Martin, James Winston, solid there. If, Like I, I told you guys a few weeks ago, um, if Tampa Bay can get something out of Austin Seffron Jenkins, they could be pretty formidable on the offensive side of the ball, especially with Mike Evans and Vincent Jackson on the outside. <laughs> so again, I got them coming in third. Oh, the Falcons. I wish the Falcons were better than they are. I'm giving them the nod because I want them to be better than they are. Um, But again, like I said, they could flip-flop in the middle there pretty easy. They brought in Alex Mack. They have Desmond Trufant. Adrian Claiborne, you know, he hasn't lived up to his potential since he came in the league. Started there in uh, Tampa Bay. Dwight Freeney finally found a home there. He'll probably be their best pass rusher this year. Not Vic Beasley. He'll probably be Dwight Freeney. Tyson Jackson out of LSU, eight years in the league. He really needs to step up for them this year. He needs to be a beast on that defensive line. I'm using the word beast a lot, but he needs needs to own his spot this year. Um, Deshaun Goldson came over to play safety. Okay, not really too excited there. 
Courtney Upshaw, he's listed as an outside linebacker, but he's a big fatty in the middle now. He's trying to switch positions to stay in the league, maybe because he likes to eat too much. I don't know. Um, he, I looked at him in one preseason game so far. He did all right in the middle. You got the Matt attack at quarterback. Matt Schaub's back in town, backing up Matt Ryan. Tevin Coleman, that's the kid's name. Second year out of Indiana. He's fast, y'all. He, he can he split out. He can run routes. He's going to be a nice little addition in the second year for them. And Devontae Freeman's going to keep doing what he does. Brought in the rookie uh, Neal out of Florida. Play some safety. He should be all right. Jake Matthews out of the Matthews family. He He's coming along real nice at tackle for him. They got a veteran tight end in Jacob Tammy. And, of course, Julio Jones in the second um, receiver for Muhammad Sanu coming over from Cincinnati. So look for them to go second or third in the division. Panthers. Panthers, you know, they got some guys. They're loaded at center. I would like to have Gino Gradkowski as a backup to Ryan Khalil. That's nice. I'll take that. Charles Johnson resigned at a discounted price. Sure, it's 10 years in the league, but you got to account for him. He owns his spot. Vernon Butler is a solid defensive tackle for him. Star Latouille. Quan Short. I mean, their defensive tackle, they are loaded. They're going to have a nice rotation, real nice rotation, to help out, you know, their linebackers, Thomas Davis, Luke Keekley, Shaq Thompson flying around. And, you know, Shaq Thompson playing for the Red Sox. Yes, the Red Sox in football. Mike Tolbert playing fullback. Cam Newton, of course. Jonathan Stewart at running back. He's, you know, he's a hard runner. He's not your speedy guy. Not really sure who their speedy guy is going to be. We'll have to see how that plays out for him. Uh, of course, you got the blind side. Michael Orr, Mike Reamers. Ed Dixon at tight end with Greg Olson. And Ke Kelvin Benjamin's back, and Devin Funches is getting good press right now in the preseason. And, you know, Ted Ginn Jr. looks like he learned how to catch the ball, so good for them. All right, let's move on to the south, and then we'll get to uh, the Let's Get Real segment. So I got the Colts bringing up, coming in last in the division, and that's just lack of talent, honestly. Their best player, Vontae Davis, he's out for the year most likely. Um, they got uh, a, kind of a washed up Patrick Robinson. Nobody really wanted him. They got a washed up Antonio Cromartie. Nobody wanted to sign. Arthur Jones has been very inconsistent for him at defensive tackle. Duquel Jackson, for their defense to be good, he's going to have need to have like 200 tackles this year. More than 200 tackles. Like 250. Break the record. Smash the record for the Colts defense to be any good at middle linebacker. Best player, maybe this is their best player, Adam Vinatieri, the 21-year vet. Trent Cole needs to do something. I know it's his 12th year in the league, but give him something. Robert Mathis, are you going to be healthy this year in your 14th year in the league? Pat McAfee, okay, they got great kickers. Pat McAfee keeps getting drug tested because he kicks the ball so far. Andrew Luck, you're going to have to prove something, okay? Fifth year in the league. Do something with it now. Live up to the hype. Don't just disappear like you have been. And yes, you've been disappearing. Sure, you had a little injury, but you admitted you didn't play well last year. From all reports that I've seen, you haven't been all that sharp throughout camp. Prove it. You got yourself a little flip phone. You got yourself a big contract. Now go ahead and go prove yourself, please. Steven, Steven Ridley came over to join the running back core. Great. He's not going to beat out Turbin or Gore. Mike Adams played real good safety for him last year. I had written Mike Adams off. <laughs> and I really like the receiver out of Miami in the second year, Philip Dorsett. I think he's a change of pace guy if you figure out how to use him right. And, you know, they probably need to throw him in some return game too. And you got T.Y. Hilton and Dante Moncrief. He's going to have a big season. Um, Fantasy-wise, you might want to look at Moncrief over Hilton, honestly, because Hilton's going to draw more of the attention. <laughs> Excuse me, y'all. Uh, the Texans, all right? Texans, I got them coming in, what, third in the division in the south? They got a few players a little getting a little old at defensive back. Vince Wolfork, you know, he's definitely at the end of his career. 
they're kind of old in the defensive back with Quentin Dempson, Kareem Jackson, and Jonathan Joseph. Brian Cushing's in his seventh year. He's got to stay healthy. They're talking Jadavian Clowney might be back to his old self. That'll be great since Watt's going to be out for at least four weeks, it seems like. And if Watt comes back healthy and Clowney's playing good, that could be lights out. Osweiler, sorry, you're the most overpaid player in the history of the NFL outside of the bad rookie deals that used to go down. Uh, you're going to get what you pay for, Houston. Alfred Blue and Lamar Miller, they should be a nice little speedy one-two punch combination. Will Fuller and DeAndre Hopkins with Braxton Miller and Cecil Shorts and Jalen Strong. That's five deep at receiver right there that any team would really like to have. I got the Jags coming in second in the division. They could easily be first. They've loaded up with a lot of young talent. We've talked about that before. Prince of Mukamura came over. They got Jalen Ramsey, Dante Fowler's back. Malik Jackson came over. Miles Jack was drafted. Paul Pelesny is going to give them some leadership. Dan Scoot is a nice little player with some leadership. Calvin Beecham on the tackle. Luke Jokel, he played better last year. They're solid at quarterback with Brodels and Henny. They're solid at running back with Ivory Yeldon and Denard Robinson. They got Mercedes Lewis at tight end, who if he ever lives up to his billing. Julius Thomas, he can at least run and catch the ball. And then you got Aurelius Ben, Rashad Green out of Florida State, Alan Hearns, Marcus Lee, and Alan Robinson, another solid receiving core. And here's my surprise pick. I'm going with the Titans to win the division. They're going to play smash mouth, no star football. And they're going to win the AFC South. That's my prediction. I'm calling it right now. Okay? And they don't have nobody but Mariota, uh, Murray, and the rookie Henry, right? And McCluster. They're just going to run, option the ball. They have no names on defense. What do they got? Brian Arakpo, he's long in tooth. McCordy, he's decent. Parrish Cox, you might not like him personally or what he does, but respect the game. I mean, not really nothing there. But I'm taking them to win the division. Mark it down, put it on your calendar, and remember it when you got to call in and tell me I was wrong. And now it's time. Let's get real. All right, let's get real. I watch Stephen A. You watch Stephen A. Smith. He's all over the place. He's a big voice in sports. He's got a loud opinion. Sometimes it's controversial. Sometimes it's not. This time, when he's reacting to Tim Tebow, and he's saying it is an insult that people are comparing him to Bryce Hopper, Harper or Derek Jeter, he is 100% right. I agree with Stephen A. Smith on this point. Tebow had one home run. He was horrible against live pitching. Um, you listen to reports by like Mark Schlereth who talked about they they rate arms because you know his son plays baseball he's a pitcher they rate arms on a 20 to 80 scale for playing outfield 20 to 80 and Tebow came in at a 30 so he barely could play like high school baseball Tebow you need to give it up Golick was right when he said your ego is what screwed up your your play in the NFL not willing to take another position your ego is what's putting you in our face now. Give up, move on, take your nice little career you had doing college football, and do that. If you want to do politics and be in everybody's face all the time, then go do that. But get off my TV. Stop trying new sports. Get over yourself. You failed. You made a bad choice. And be done with it. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. I really appreciate the support. I love the feedback. Sign up for the Fantasy League before your time runs out. I don't want your time to run out. And uh, until next time, just be real.